Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the optimization technique. Today we will discuss about the methods related to the multiple multivariate optimization. The method is called as Markov method. Myself, Dr. Gar, working in the School of Mathematics, Thapar Institute. So we have seen that there are so many methods for solving the unconstrained optimization problems, which are discretized into the uh, either the direct search and the descent methods are there, which includes. Steepest descent, Fletcher Eves, Newtons, quasi Newtons, and many more are there. In our previous lecture, we have already discussed about the steepest descent, Fletcher, Newtons, quasi Newtons, and now in this lecture, we will discuss about Markov method for solving the unconstrained optimization problem. This method utilizes the features of this steepest descent as well as the uh, Newtons method. So, what is the brief about the about the steepest method? Is this method as we know that the steepest descent method is very helpful to reduce the function value when your opti when your de desired vector is away from the optimal solution so if you want to see this steepest descent method you can simply follow this link or else browse this dr harish garg youtube channel also uh, the on the other hand the newton method converges very fastly when you have chosen the design vector or the decision vectors is closer to the optimal solution so by taking the advantages of the steepest descent and the newton's method this markov method attempts to uh, pr uh, to find the optimal solutions uh, based on the features what this method suggests that this method will modify the diagonal entries of the hessian matrix j so if j is your diagonal entries then you can add some scalar values alpha with i is my identity matrix alpha is the positive values and which what is the purpose of this alpha is which will help you to define the positive definiteness of this j whenever because we know that j is a hessian matrix so it can be the positive definite it can be the negative definite so whenever this is it is a negative definite so we will add some something higher value so that it becomes the positive definite so that's the purpose of this alpha i because all of you as knows that whenever there is a positive definite we will guarantee about its minimum uh, or minimum solution of the problem so may also make sure that since alpha is a constant value so if it is a very large value what will be happen of this so if alpha is say 10 raised to the power 4 so what is the meaning of that this value is approximately be equal to this alpha of i you can say this alpha i will dominates over the hessian matrix so what is that so once you will the this then what is the inverse of this matrix so this part is nothing but my alpha of this so i can say this part is nothing but my alpha of this that is 1 by here so therefore since one alpha is a constant value so 1 by alpha is also be a positive constant value so it's a positive constant value so when you substitute here so that direct search direction method is look like here so if you substitute this j inverse value from this value this is a j inverse value so what is that this is i is the identity matrix so what is the purpose of this this is nothing but my 1 by alpha i of i is nothing but here so this is nothing but the steepest descent method so you can say this alpha i becomes the steepest descent whenever alpha is a very large value now in this uh, method that is a markov method what we will do is we will start with the initial value of the alpha which is taken to be very large say 10 to the power 4 and then we will try to decrease its value until it becomes the zero as the process will going step by step also as the value of the alpha decreases from the large value to the zero what is the meaning of this is that is we will try to move the search direction from the steepest descent to the newton's method because the steepest descent method will uh, will reduce the function value which are closer uh, which are away from this optimal solution and which is this is which is closer to the optimal solution now we will see uh, what are the algorithm behind that there are three step rule are there what are the three steps rule are there you have to start with the initial point x0 x1 you have to set the value of the alpha 1 which is of order 10 to the power alpha we choose the two constants c1 and c2 one is lies between 0 1 other is greater than 1 and this is the error that is a tolerance error that is our target we can generally set as a 10 to the power minus 2 of order we will compute this gradient vector of the function 
we will check whether this gradient is less than of this tolerance error then we can say this x i is optimal otherwise we will perform the new step what is the new step is we will try to compute the new solution by using this one that is a j plus alpha of i and then we will check the new function value at this point f of x i plus 1 if f of x plus 1 is either less than of the previous value or it is a greater than or equal to once it is a less than of this it means our target is to reduce the value so once it will be reduce the value we will multiply this number between the 0 1 then only it can be reduced so then we will try to update this alpha with the help of a c1 of alpha otherwise if it is a greater than of this it means there is no need to reduce them we will try to update the value with the help of c2 and instead of going to this step one we will try to go again here we will replace this value of alpha by here and then we will try to find this value of alpha plus one again now the working of these three steps are illustrated with the help of these numerical examples here. So say you have to perform, say perform the four iterations of this functions and so on. So that is very simple since our target is to perform this step. So what is that? We need the Hessian matrix J, we need the gradient, we need the J plus alpha I, and we will need the inverse of them. So we will firstly calculate this. Hessian of we will calculate the gradient of this how we compute the gradient is all of you know that this is nothing but partial derivative with respect to x1 partial derivative with respect to x2 you will get here how you find the Hessian matrix all of you know that this is the Hessian matrix so what is that this is my function what is the second derivative with respect to the x1 you will get this expression now you can substitute its value here this is my j this is 4 2 2 here alpha is a is a uh, 10 raised to the power 4 or you can say as alpha i is my identity matrix so i can take an alpha as this so this is my j cap so once you will get the j cap how you find this inverse this is the 2 cross 2 matrix you can find the inverse as here now we can perform the equation as of this so what is that we will try to start with the initial point x1 alpha is given to you at the point 0 comma 0 what is the gradient value you can see that what is the value at x1 that is a 0 comma 0 what is the value of this at 0 comma 0 this is 1 minus 1 so you can start from here so this is my step 1 now we will find the norm of this how you find the norm of this this is a square root of 1 square plus of this square since this number is greater than of this epsilon, epsilon is by 10 to the power 2, so we will perform the step third as here. So now in order to find this step, that is this number is my j cap inverse. So we already computed the j cap inverse like here or else you can use the j this and then find the inverse. Since alpha is given to you 10 to the power 4, we can substitute the value here. We will get this x1 as a 0, 0. This is my j inverse this is my gradient after the calculation you will get x2 as this after finding this x2 we will find the value of the f2 that is by substitute the value of this is x1 this is x2 in here we will get this value now compare this value whether this value is less than of the previous value what is the f1 if you substitute 0 comma 0 here it is my 0 so since this is negative so this value is less than of this once this number is less than we will try to update the value of alpha by c1 times of this that is a 1 by 4 of this now we will perform the same steps in the in the second equation that is at this point my x is my x2 alpha is now my 2500 gradient is this now this is my x1 and x2 we can substitute the value in the gradient we will get here we will compute the norm again it will be computed as here it is a greater than so we will compute the value as of here so we can find the value of the j inverse by using here or this so since the alpha is not very large so i can write here value you can see this is alpha is my 2500 so this is 2504 2502 and so on this is the alpha inverse or else you can substitute directly alpha in this case after solving this you will get the answer as x3 then we will find the value of the f3 that is f of x3 so this value is computed as of here so you can compare this value with the value of the f2 here since this value uh, since this value is less than of the f2 
so we can find this alpha 3 which is nothing but the 1 by 4 times of this now we can perform the equation number third we can start from this value that is of here at x3 alpha is my 625 we can find the gradient and we can see the norm is again greater than of this again we will use this j for finding this value you can see alpha is my 625 so 625 plus 4 is 629 627 and so on so this is the inverse after the calculation in the calculator you will get this value and again you can find the value of the f4 again this value is less than of alpha 3 which is computed in the last slide so again we will set the alpha 4 as here since in the given problem we have to perform the four equations so for the fourth equation we can start from here this is my x4 alpha is my 156.25 gradient at this point x4 is my this again norm is my greater than of this we can compute the value of this by using here again this is nothing but my 4 plus alpha 2 and 2 plus alpha are there so at this point again we will compute the f5 and we can see this value is less than of here so since in the equation is asking about the four equations we can stop here otherwise you can perform this equations until your norm value will be less than of alpha so if you perform this again and again, you will get the solution convergence after the 12th equation like here. X6 will get this value is greater than of the alpha. You have to move 7, 8 and last step you can see this value is less than of this. So my optimal answer is X1 is my minus 1, X2 is my here. Look at the one more examples are there. You can perform the three equations by using this initial point 1 comma 2 c1 c2 epsilon and alpha are here so we can find the gradient of this vector this is nothing but here you can find the hessian matrix of this you can find this now you can find the j plus alpha i and you can find the j inverse j cap inverse like here once you are finding this then we can start with the first equation remember we start with the three equations c1 is there initial point is 1 comma 2 so what is the value of this so at x1 this is 1 comma 2 what is the gradient of this so it is a 1 comma 2 this is my 0 this is 1 that's a minus 1 plus 2 that's a 11 so the gradient of this is my 0 comma 11 can you find the norm of this this is same as that of this because this is 0 square plus 11 square is nothing but my 11 which is greater than of this so we can compute the value of the x2 by using here since j is here or else you can use the j inverse of this since initially alpha is a very large number so you can compute the j inverse by using here after the calculation you will get this x2 now we can compute the value of the f of 2 by you substitute the value of the x1 1 x2 as a 1.99 and you can compare with the value of the f1 what is the value of the f1 if you substitute 1 comma 2 here you will get as 11 so since this number is less than of so we can reduce the alpha with the help of c1 alpha 1 that is here now we can perform the same step we can perform for the second equation that is alpha at x2 alpha is my here gradient value is this norm again you can check that it is a greater than of the epsilon we can perform this x3 as previous value x2 that is of this minus alpha or minus j inverse of gradient so after substituting you will get this expression again we can find the value of the L, uh, f3 we will see it is a less than of the f2 so we can compute alpha 3 as here finally we can perform the third equations at the point of alpha 3 that is at this point x3 we can compute the gradient and compute the norm are there again you can see this is a greater than of the epsilon so we can perform these steps again and we can see this alpha r here so since in, in our question we are asking about the three equations so we can stop at here otherwise if you want to move further you can see after the third equation the solution will be my here uh, in our next class we will see how you can construct the matlab code of this method till then you can simply follow this link for finding the various videos best of luck students